Hey guys, welcome back to the magical world of book words. My name is Renuka and welcome back to yet another bookish video. As you must have guessed from the title, today's video is dedicated to a very, very special book and that is I Hid My Voice by Parinur Saini. This was a book recommendation by Archal who runs the channel Libro Review. You must be knowing her and if you don't, please go check her channel out. She gives really, really good recommendations and this is one such book recommendation by her. This was on my TBR since a very long time but it wasn't available on any of the shopping websites from where I order books. I searched it everywhere and when it became available, it was available at much higher prices. But I finally spotted it on Amazon at a reasonable price and I ordered it without giving a second thought. I realized after reading it that it is it is very important to talk about this book in detail. It deserves a dedicated video and this is just my realizations and my experience that I got after reading this book. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. Speaking about the details of the paperback, the copy that I own is by Abacus Publication and I ordered it for 4.99 rupees. I'll definitely try to link the book down in the description if it is still available and if not, keep your eyes on the book and as soon as it becomes available do order it and read it it is important for you to read this book Speaking of the title, in reference to the plot of the novel, this is the story of Shahab, a four-year-old who stays with his mother, father, elder brother Arash and younger sister Shadi. In spite of being four years old, he has not started speaking yet and all the doctors say that he is completely normal. There is no physical disorder. There is something mental, there is some mental restriction that is stopping him from speaking. His mother is definitely sure that her boy will speak but his father gets fed up with his not speaking and grows distant from Shahab. Shahab forms a mental uh, categorization in his head that all the dumb kids, all the mute kids, retarded as his father calls him, belong to mothers and all the good, perfect, intelligent kids like his older brother Arash belong to the fathers. This is the mental border that he forms in his head and that is what the plot revolves around. Speaking about the language of the book, the language of this book is extremely easy. Anyone can comprehend it if you understand English language. It is definitely possible for you to understand the language of this book and comprehend it very well. Though the language is not difficult, this book is extremely led and if you read between the lines, if you have a habit of reading between the lines, if you have a habit of finding sub themes, underlying themes and uh, lying under the main theme then this book, book will give you many, many more things than what is specified in the blog, for sure. One more important thing to mention about the book is that there are two narrations in the book. One is from Shahab's perspective and another is from his mother's perspective. I think that the books written in the first person point of view, from the first person point of view, are extremely interesting because they help you to instantly connect to the characters. We get an insight into the mental space of Shahab as well as we get an insight into the mental space of his mother. And that is what actually kept me hooked. That is also one of the reasons why this book managed to keep me hooked till the very end. I think the most important theme that the book deals with is that of child abuse. I'm not talking about physical abuse. Yes, Shahab does get a beating once or twice from his father, but I think that is normal. All the kids get beaten by their parents. I'm talking about the mental abuse of this child by his own father. Shahab is best understood by his mother and his maternal grandmother, but his father constantly categorizes him as dumb and labels him as retarded, along with his other relatives. This practically feeds the mental block of Shahab. He says that whenever I want to speak, my throat dries up, my mouth goes dry and I'm not able to speak. This is certainly a mental block that is restricting the child from speaking and being gentle and being loving and showering him with all his love and encouraging him are the only ways to remove this mental block and get him back into mainstream. But under the pretext that I need to work a lot for my family, his father believes in taking out his all his frustration on this poor four-year-old boy. His older brother Arash and his younger sister Shadi are showered with a lot of love by his father as well as all the relatives. But when it comes to Shahab, the fact is constantly emphasized that Shahab is dumb. He cannot understand anything. But they forget the fact that the boy can hear you. He can listen. And all these criticisms have a very, very negative impact on his psychology. And he finds his own way of dealing with things. He finds his own... Uh, spaces of solace and he retreats into them. 
I think that his father's mental abuse actually made Shahab retreat into his mental space even more. And if his father would have been a bit understanding, a bit loving, then Shahab would not have gone through all that he went through in this book. This book actually deals with child psychology and gives you a very good insight into this uh, into, into the psychology of a four year old. Shahab practically creates his imaginary world. He has two imaginary friends whom he names as Asi and Babi and he talks to them in his head but he does not talk to anyone else aloud. And I think that if his father would have been understanding and if his relatives would have been understanding, if they would have been gentle on him, then he would never have done that. He, he had to make create his own imaginary friends because there was no one else to understand him. Shahab's bond with his mother is very very adorable. Um, Shahab is humiliated time and again by his father and his relatives and he finds his own way of revenging, avenging those things. However, when he realizes and how, when his mother tells him that these revenges are practically troubling me and they will trouble you too, he gives them up. He is ready to, ready to do anything for his mother just to make her smile. His mother's happiness means the world to him and he can do anything, he can give up anything, he can, he can go to any extent to make her happy. His mother is the only sunshine in his life, he knows that and she knows that too. And the way both of these people, Shahab and his mother cherish that bond is very very beautiful and it will warm your heart to an extent that I cannot definitely I, I can definitely not describe with words another important theme that this book deals with is that of the relationship between the children and the parents Shahab narrates his own story and he says that as soon as my sister was born everyone stopped taking stopped taking a notice of me until his sister was born Shahab was the center of attraction for the entire family but as soon as Shadi arrived in this world Shahab was practically thrown into a corner and that made him retreat even more into his mental space. I think that if a child is growing away from his parents at such a young age then it is the parents fault. His parents take no efforts in making all the three children feel equal. Parents need to establish this fact to all the children that we love you equally. Since Arash is a bit older than Shahab and he's also good at studies and he has his own image, he is not affected by this as much as Shahab. But Shahab, who is going through a very, very tender mental stage, is affected by this even more. So I think that if the relationship between the parents and the children is getting affected, in spite of the children being so young, as young as Shahab is, it is definitely his parents' fault and not his fault. This book also talks about the impact of burdening our children with your expectations. According to Shahab's father, Shahab is dumb and hence his elder brother Arash who is a topper at school, who is the perfect student, who is a perfect son, is burdened even more by his father's expectations since he need to fulfill uh, his father's expectations that he had from his younger brother Shahab as well. And it speaks about how it affected Arash on the mental level in a very very negative manner. If you want your children to flourish, give them their freedom, let them do whatever they want to and they will definitely prosper. But if you burden them, you you can definitely expect from your children. But if you burden them with your expectations, they will never flourish the way you want them to. If you desire your children's happiness, let them do what makes them happy. This book gives a strong message about this about not burdening your children with your expectations. Speaking of the characters, I've already spoken about Shahab's bond with his mother, his relationship with his father and his other relatives. But the character that I loved the most in the entire novel was that of Bibi, who is Shahab's maternal grandmother. She comes down to stay with Shahab's family for a few days and Shahab forms a very, very beautiful bond with her as well. She plays a very important role in uh, the turn or the twist of the novel, but I cannot mention that since that will be a spoiler. But she treats Shahab in the most natural way. She treats Shahab like any other normal kid. She makes him feel as though he's just like his elder brother Arash or his younger sister Shadi and there is nothing unusual or abnormal about it. She provides a very very comfortable mental space to Shahab and very soon she becomes his best friend as well. That was a part that I really enjoyed a lot reading about Shahab's bond with his grandmother. Though it is described for a very short span of time, it was really heartwarming to read about it and I really felt that Shahab's father should have taken some lessons 
from Shahab's grandmother that how the children are supposed to be brought up. Definitely. So this is pretty much it. This is all about the book, what the book is about and what I felt while reading this book and my reading experience with this book. If you haven't read this book up till now, you definitely need to pick it up. As I said, I will try to link it down and if it is out of stock or unavailable by any chance, grab it as soon as you can and if you have already read it, then I would definitely like to read your experiences down in the comment section. Thank you for watching the video till the end and you know the drill. Please leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram and help me spread a lot of bookish love.